Need a new playmat? Playing with Power MTG now has merchandise. Go to playwithpowermtg.com to order playmats and t-shirts with more merch on the way. All sales help us grow the channel. You can also support us by purchasing on TCG Player through our affiliate links in the description. We love TCG Player because it gives the best prices online and still supports local game stores. Finally, you can support us directly through Patreon. You'll get access to our community, early access to videos, and even exclusive videos not available anywhere else. More info is in the description. Thanks for watching. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to Playing With Power MTG, where we play with the most powerful cards in the most powerful formats. Round two is here, and we brought the boogeyman of the format to the table. That's right, we brought Fish Hulk. We wanted to give Fish Hulk a true rundown and see how it will fare in the competitive meta. We didn't want to make it easy for the fish, though. We brought some of the most powerful decks in the meta as well to face against it to see how it will stand up. A quick thanks to all of our Patreons for their support. We really could not do this without you. If you'd like to become a patron, please check out the link in the description below and check out some of the perks our patrons get. You can also show your support by liking this video and subscribing to our channel if you're not already a subscriber. It really helps out a lot. Now, let's start out by showcasing our fighters this evening. First, we have Mike, piloting the Fish Hulk itself, led by Timna the Weaver and Thrasios, Triton Hero. Fish Hulk is a Flash Hulk deck that uses the combo of Flash and Protean Hulk to bring out multiple packages that allow for instant speed wins, such as the Breakfast Combo plus Thassa's Oracle or Spellseeker plus Blood Pet to cast Demonic Consultation. Mike's ability to pilot Timnathrasios deck is second to none in our group, and we wanted to give the fish the best pilot in our arsenal. Mike's opening hand contains a Notion Thief, Vampiric Tutor, Enlightened Tutor, Avacyn's Pilgrim, Elves of Deep Shadow, Breeding Pool, and a Command Tower. Next, the Fish Hulk's first opponent is Ryan, piloting the four-color pairing of Timna the Weaver and Krom, Ludovix Opus. This deck, called Opus Thief, is a storm deck that leverages wheels and soft locks to outvalue opponents before going for the win. Ryan's opening hand contains a Command Tower, Soul Ring, Morphic Pool, Hallowed Fountain, Imperial Seal, and Aristic Study. After that, we have Garrett piloting Najila, the Blade Blossom. This deck is a tempo deck packed with interaction, combos, and synergies with the commander. Garrett's opening hand contains a Dovin's Veto, Gemstone Caverns, Ancient Tomb, Finale of Devastation, Watery Grave, Elves of Deep Shadow, and a Marsh Flats. Finally, we have Folger piloting the four-color pairing of Thrasios Triton Hero and Vile Smasher the Fierce. This deck, called Curious Control, seeks to slow down other decks while grinding and outvaluing its opponents. Folger's opening hand contains an Ancient Tomb, Arcane Signet, Island, Demir Signet, Talisman of Dominance, and a Windswept Heath. Without further ado, let's kick off this upcoming undulation of Unorthodox Uproaring Upperclassmen. Mike wins a game of Guess That Internet Slang and gets a start us off. But Garrett has a pregame action and puts Gemstone Caverns onto the battlefield, exiling Watery Grave. Mike plays a Command Tower for turn. He casts an Elves of Deep Shadow. He passes. Ryan plays a Command Tower as well for turn. He casts a Soul Ring. He also passes. Garrett plays an Ancient Tomb for turn. He taps his Ancient Tomb to cast his Commander, Najila, the Blade Blossom. A turn one Najila is really bad news for the table, and Garrett gives a turn to Folger. Folger also plays an Ancient Tomb for turn. He taps his Ancient Tomb to cast Arcane Signet. He ends his turn. During his upkeep, Mike casts Enlightened Tutor. He fetches up a Mystic Remora onto the top of his library. He plays a Breeding Pool into play untapped, paying two life. He casts Mystic Remora. Folger responds by casting Swan Song, countering Mystic Remora and becoming the hero to the rest of the table. With nothing else, Mike passes. Ryan plays a Watery Grave into play untapped, paying two life. He casts a Ristic Study. Not wanting to let Ryan draw cards, Mike responds by tapping his Elves of Deep Shadow to cast Vampiric Tutor. He fetches up a card onto the top of his library and loses two life. Then, Ristic Study resolves. Ryan follows up by casting Imperial Seal. He also fetches up a card onto the top of his library and loses two life as well. All through, Ryan passes. Garrett plays a Marsh Flats for turn. He moves the combat, attacking Folger with Najila, creating a 1 1 warrior token, attacking Ryan. Both take the damage, and Garrett passes the turn. 
Folger plays a windswept teeth for turn. He taps his ancient tomb to cast Talisman of Dominance, paying the rest tax. Folger passes. Mike starts off his turn by casting Avacyn's Pilgrim. He taps his Elves of Deep Shadow to pay the Rhystic Tax. After that, he plays Besiju, who shelters all. This is a big problem for the table, because that would make his flash uncounterable. All through, Mike gives a turn to Ryan. Ryan plays a Hallowed Fountain into play untapped, paying two life. He casts his commander, Krom, Ludovic's Opus. Staring down a Najila player, he decides not to attack with Krom and passes the turn. At the end of Ryan's turn, Garrett cracks his marsh flats to fetch up an overgrown tomb into play tapped. On his turn, Garrett taps his ancient tomb to cast Finale of Devastation, where X equals 2. In response, Folger cracks his windswept teeth for a breeding pool into play untapped, paying 2 life. He taps his talisman to cast Vampiric Tutor, paying the Rhystic Tax. He fetches up a card onto the top of his library and loses 2 life. Then Garrett's Finale resolves and he fetches up a Dockside Extortionist onto the battlefield. Dockside triggers and Garrett creates four treasures. He moves to combat and attacks Folger with Najila and his warrior, creating two more warriors. Folger takes six and Garrett ships the turn to Folger. Folger plays an island for turn. He taps his ancient tomb to cast Toxic Deluge, paying four life and paying the Rhystic Tax. With that, the board is wiped and then Folger casts his commander, Thrasios, Triton Hero. He passes the turn to Mike. On his turn, Mike also casts his commander, Thrasios. He taps his Besiege you, paying two life to pay the Rhystic Tax. Mike passes. Ryan plays a Morphic Pool for turn. He casts up Mystic Remora. In response, and seeing the value train Ryan is about to hop on, Garrett casts Vampiric Tutor, paying the Rhystic Tax. He fetches up a card onto the top of his library and loses two life. Then, to the dismay of the table, Remora resolves. Ryan passes the turn. On Garrett's turn, and everyone thinking Garrett tutored up something to do about Ryan's board state, shows what he tutored by casting Thassa's Oracle, tapping his ancient tomb to pay the Rhystic Tax. Oracle resolves and its ETB trigger goes onto the stack. Garrett responds to his trigger by casting Demonic Consultation, paying for Rhystic, but not the Mystic. In response, Ryan casts Dovin's Veto, countering the spell. With his win thwarted, Thassa's ETB resolves, Garrett looks at the top two, bottoming one, and putting the other on top. All finished up, Garrett ends his turn. Folger plays a command tower for turn. He sees imminent issues coming in the next rotation, so he holds up mana and passes the turn. Mike untaps, draws his card, looks around the table, does nothing else, and passes the turn. During his upkeep, Ryan pays for his Mystic Remora. He plays a City of Brass for turn. He casts his other commander, Timna the Weaver. He passes the turn. On his turn, Garrett casts an Elves of Deep Shadow, tapping his Ancient Tomb to pay the Rhystic Tax. He casts an Imperial Seal, paying the Rhystic, but not the Mystic. He fetches up a card onto the top of his library and loses two life. He passes the turn. At the end of Garrett's turn, Folger activates Thrasios, scrying one to the bottom and revealing a Demonic Tutor. Folger starts off his turn by tapping his Talisman to cast Necropotence. He pays five life into Necropotence, exiling five cards. He moves to his end step and puts the cards into his hand. Mike plays a Misty Rainforest for turn. He passes. During his upkeep, Ryan pays for his Mystic Remora. He plays a Mana Confluence for turn. He casts Narset, Harder of Veils. He follows up by tapping his Mana Confluence to cast Winds of Change. <laughs> this serves as a real problem for everyone with Narset on the battlefield, and everyone debates on who should react to it. Garrett and Folger both pass priority to Mike forcing the Fish Hulk player to act and uses removal. With priority on Mike, he passes. Winds of Change resolves to everyone's surprise, and they shuffle their hands into their libraries with Ryan drawing a new hand and everyone else drawing one. Ryan casts Ponder, looking at the top three and drawing a card. He casts a Mana Crypt. Finally through, Ryan passes the turn. Garrett plays a Gaia's Cradle for turn. He taps his Ancient Tomb to cast Najila for the second time. He passes. At the end of Garrett's turn, Folger taps his Ancient Tomb to activate Thrasios, scrying to the bottom and revealing a Sylvan Library, which is about the worst card he could reveal right now with Necropotence on the battlefield. Folger starts off his turn by casting Dockside Extortionist, paying the Rhystic Tax. Dockside enters and Folger creates four treasures. He activates Necropotence for three, exiling three cards. He moves to his end step and puts the cards into his hand. At the end of Folger's turn, Mike cracks his Misty Rainforest to fetch up an Underground Sea. He then taps his Besiege to activate Thrasios, scrying and revealing a Gilded Drake. 
On his turn, Mike casts Carpet of Flowers, paying for Rhystic, but not the Mystic. He moves to a second main phase, adding two white through his Carpet of Flowers. He casts his commander, Timna the Weaver. He passes the turn. During his upkeep, Ryan loses his Mana Crypt trigger and takes three damage. Also in his upkeep, he pays for his Mystic Remora. He plays a Volcanic Island for turn. He casts Smothering Tide. The other players wonder what's left to do before Ryan outvalues everyone and Ryan passes the turn. During his draw step, Garrett draws a card and taps his Ancient Tomb to pay for Smothering Tide. He plays a Scalding Tarn for turn. Looking to get Ryan under control, he attacks Narset with his Thassa's Oracle and Najila, creating a warrior. Ryan thinks about the best blocks and decides to block Najila with Temna. In response, Garrett cracks the Scalding Tarn to fetch up a Steam Vents into play untapped, paying two life. Combat resolves, Narset takes two, Najila and Timna die, and Ryan gains two life. In his second main phase, Garrett taps his Elves of Deep Shadow to cast Najila for the third time. He passes to Folger. At the end of Garrett's turn, Folger activates Thrasios, scrying and revealing an exotic orchard, putting it onto the battlefield tapped. Folger plays a Flooded Strand for turn. He casts Carpet of Flowers, paying the Rhystic Tax. He moves to his second main phase and adds three black through his carpet. He casts his commander, Vile Smasher the Fierce, paying the Rhystic Tax again. All through, he ends his turn. On his turn, Mike adds three blue through his carpet of flowers. He casts Gilded Drake. Drake resolves and Mike trades it for Garrett's Najila. He moves to combat and attacks Narset with both Timna and Thrasios, killing off the Planeswalker. In his second main, he casts Preordain, scrying two and drawing a card. He plays a Tropical Island for turn and passes to Ryan. At the end of Mike's turn, Ryan casts a Limduel's Vault. He looks at the top five, doesn't like what he sees, and decides to pay one, two, three, all the way up to seven life to look seven extra times. He finds a pile he likes, shuffles his library, then rearranges them accordingly. During his upkeep, Ryan's Mystic Remora and Mana Crypt go onto the stack. Ryan responds by casting Silence. Knowing that this will put them out of the game and in response, Mike taps his Besiege to activate Thrasios, scrying to the bottom and revealing a Mana Drain. Being tapped out, however, he is unable to cast it. Priority passes around the table again and Folger responds by casting Counterspell. Bile Smasher triggers and hits Mike for two. Ryan then responds by casting Dispel, targeting Counterspell. In response, Folger cracks his Flooded Strand to fetch up a snow-covered island. He then taps his Ancient Tomb to activate Thrasios. He scries and reveals a Dispel off the top. He then casts Dispel, targeting Silence, paying for the Rhystic Tax. With that, Silence is countered. In his main phase, Ryan taps his Mana Confluence to cast Thassa's Oracle. Everyone, with their mana spent on preventing Silence, pass priority. Thassa's Oracle resolves and its ETB trigger goes onto the stack. In response, Ryan casts Tainted Pact. Tainted Pact resolves, Ryan exiles his library, and then Thassa's Oracle's ability resolves, and Ryan wins the game. Ladies and gentlemen, I've got to say, that game was riveting. It was very hard to capture in the narration of the game, but while Fishhawk didn't win, it definitely affected the table. People were always on guard of what mana he had untapped and frequently held answers in their hands in anticipation of it going off at any time. A true concession must be made, however, in stating that while this is the best geared deck for the format, it isn't unbeatable. Fish Hulk's presence that night was felt from a strategic standpoint, but not so much from a board presence alone. Congrats to Ryan on his win. His value pieces proved to be too much for the table, and in the end, he was able to get the resources he needed to win. Garrett was definitely always doing something, and his early win attempt was out of nowhere. The table knew, however, that you must always keep Najila under control, or it will cut out of hand faster than you can catch up. Folger kept trying to play catch-up most of the night. He used so much of his life as a resource that he ended up painted into a corner. Ryan's silence during his upkeep forced Folger to use his interaction, hoping that others could possibly still fight. Mike did a great job at playing head games and slowing down opponents through threats of winning with his deck. In the end, the Narset wheel crippled him and he wasn't able to recover. The player of the game was Ryan. His tax pieces choked the board of their resources, and his Narset wheel combo definitely set them on the back foot. The most valuable card was Narset, Parter of Veils. 
Everyone groaned when it hit the board, and the wheel completely choked everyone's game plan. It was then public enemy number one at the table, taking the efforts of everyone banding together to get rid of it. Well, that about wraps it up for this episode. Tune in next time when we will duke it out to see who will be king of the competitive EDH table. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time.